Hey folks, Ira here. I hope you've had a great Thursday. Thanks for tuning in for the Earthquake Report. Today is April the 7th, 2016. This is also known as Caramel Popcorn, National Beer, No Housework, and World Health Day. As of 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time, we have experienced 212 earthquakes for the day. Before we jump into today's events, let's recap. On Tuesday, April the 5th, we spoke of the earthquake pattern we had observed in and around the Pacific Plate and the lack of seismic activity around locations like Chile. Combine this with the increasingly more potent earthquakes we were experiencing around the western lip of the Ring of Fire, we issued an earthquake watch specifically for the Pacific Plate. The following day, we experienced two back-to-back magnitude 6-plus earthquakes strike the globe. Vanuatu was shaken by 6.7, and Indonesia was hit by 6.0. These intense earthquakes did not stop there, though. Vanuatu was also struck with a 5.9 and a 5.3, and a series of 4s that approached the Category 5 magnitude. The same can be said for Indonesia. So, we had signs that the Pacific Plate was in fact on the move. What is interesting is that one could say the globe experienced unrest as we registered some truly unusual locations experiencing movement. For example, Greenland was struck with a 4.7, Somalia with a 4.5, and St. Martin with a 3.1. Outside of all of this, one would think that the world was coming to an end. I'm referring to the fact that the seismic monitoring equipment in Yellowstone had been disabled for one reason or another. Blogs and videos from around the world were claiming that Yellowstone was on the verge of rendering most places uninhabitable in the United States. You know, the idea of Yellowstone blowing is absolutely fascinating and horrifying. At the same time, it is definitely a generator of attention. Reading through comments and watching videos of people flipping out is pretty frustrating, really. Especially when there isn't any proof or indication that anything is really happening. I guess at the end of the day, it's all about driving views and whatnot, though. Anyways, our reporting equipment is once again online. Apparently, an internet upgrade of sorts was to blame. With that being said, I would love to get your two cents on the mayhem this caused and on the reason for the outage. Okay, let's focus a moment on today's earthquakes. First thing this morning, Vanuatu was hit by another powerful earthquake, this time around a 6.7. This is actually downgraded from a 6.9. As you would expect, they have been experiencing multiple aftershocks, all of which were in the magnitude 4 category. Arapa, Venezuela was struck by a 5.2. Now, this area is prone to earthquakes from time to time. In fact, the last substantial earthquake to strike the area was on March the 15th. This was a 4.1. If we look specifically at the Ring of Fire, we will see that the earthquake activity may be returning somewhat to normal. Beginning in South America, we will see that Chile has returned to life. Two clocked in thus far, both being 4.9s. Their neighbor to the north clocked in at 4.6. This struck Paracas, Peru. Alberto Avido Mota, Mexico, clocked in a 2.8. Our pals in California have registered 109 thus far, the largest being a 3.1 in San Simeon. We follow this up with a 2.7 in Chester and a 2.7 just off the coast in Ferndale. Several faults experienced movement today, the majority of which centered around the San Jacinto as well as the San Andreas. However, the movement capital of California today goes to Cobb and the geysers care of primarily the Koleomi fault zone. Alaska experienced fewer than normal earthquakes today, 28 clocked in thus far, the most intense being a 3.7 in Chiknik Lakes. Japan was shaken by a 4.1 today. This struck just off the coast of the Great Honshu Island. Finally, we experienced two earthquakes to strike Fiji, a 4.5 and a 5.0. This just so happens to be another area that has been extremely quiet over the past few days. Now, let's take a moment to speak to the unusual earthquakes experienced around the globe. South Africa saw a 4.8 just off the coast, and Snyder, Texas clocked in a 2.7. Speaking of Texas, I would simply like to say just how impressed I am with Dutch Sense. During his most recent earthquake forecast, he stated that Texas would see some movement. I made a point to monitor the area, and sure enough, this came to pass. So, nice work, sir. 
Outside of Oklahoma, today's earthquake activity around the United States has also returned to normal. Oklahoma, though, has seen numerous earthquakes, with the most intense being a 4.0 that just struck Luther. That brings their daily total to 7. Luther has clocked in 4th thus far, with an average magnitude of a 3.3. Helena clocked in 2, a 3.4 and a 2.7. And our pals in Perry have been shaken by a 3.6. In closing, it would appear as though we could see a reduction in the more intense earthquakes going forward, and I suspect that we'll go through a period of normalcy soon. That's not to say that the potential for powerful seismic movement isn't present. Simply based off the data, I would be inclined to say that this will be the case. I would love to get your thoughts on this, though. And that is it for the earthquake report, folks. If you experienced an earthquake today, or if you would like to comment on the video, please post below. We'd like to hear from you. Make certain to like and subscribe. Share if you feel inclined. Also, if you like the social media thing, you can link to us via the standard allotted social sites in the description. We'll end this report with a video feed of our favorite star. Have a great night, guys. Hoorah!